Hi all, welcome. I am Chelsea. I'm a bookseller at Parnassus Books and I am thrilled to be introducing to you our very special virtual event for today, Brad Meltzer and Chris Eliopoulos. They are the author illustrator team of uh, the two new books in their series. I am Dolly Parton and I am I am Pei. I was told there may be some materials you need for today's presentation. So if you don't have a paper and pencil or pen handy, you'll definitely want that later on. If you have questions for our author and illustrator team, please put those in the comments below. We will also have a link to buy both books in the comments as well below. So I'm happy to introduce and turn it over to Brad and Chris. I'm gonna swim in. Ta-da! We made it. Okay, we actually made it. I can't believe it. So, yes. Um, first, 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 most important thing. Uh, my name is Brad Belcher. This is Chris Eliopoulos. And we, Chris and I both want to say the most important thing of all, which is thank you to Parnassus Books for hosting us. I was telling them offline, and I'm going to say it now so that they know it's even more true, is we were not going to do a virtual event for you tonight. We were like, no, no, we're not doing it for you. We don't want to do it for you. And then because we're just like, everyone's, you know, they're Zoomed out. We've done a lot of virtual events. Everyone's been on Zoom all day. And then we heard this is that it was going to be for Parnassus in Dolly Parton's like home state. Like, how do we not do that? So we are here because of Parnassus truly. And we just want to thank them. Uh, they are so sweet, so nice. Even when we were offline and we were talking, they seem like the nicest two women in the whole planet. So thank you for hosting us tonight. Welcome to uh, the only virtual event we are doing for I am Dolly Parton and I am I am Pay. Is that the best title of all, right? I am I am Pay. We could have done an I apostrophe M, I'm I am Pay, but my kids love pointing out the fact that it is I'm I am I am. My children have no sense of humor. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk very quickly about the book and where it comes from. Chris is going to give you a drawing lesson. So truly get a sheet of paper if you haven't gotten it right now and get a pencil or pen or crayon or whatever you want to draw with. I'm talking to parents as well. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. And booksellers. And, and booksellers, yes, booksellers too, because you will be great at the end, um, or at least judged by Chris for your artistic abilities. No, he will not judge you at all. Um, very quickly, I'm going to talk about who we're here to talk about tonight. And I brought this because I brought visual aids tonight. Um, how do we not start with, of course, I am Dolly Parton. And Dolly Parton for us, you know, we started this series because we wanted our kids to have better heroes to look up to. Our kids are being fed garbage every day on the internet, on Instagram. They scroll through stuff and they see the same garbage over and over. And they see influencers who have no business influencing our children. They see overpaid athletes um, and they see people who truly we think we can give better heroes for your, for your kids, for my kids, for Chris's kids. And we started the series with I'm Amelia Earhart. We did I Am Abraham Lincoln, I Am Rosa Parks, I Am Albert Einstein, my son who loves sports. For him, we did I Am Jackie Robinson. My daughter loves animals. And we did for her, um, I Am Jane Goodall to show her the power of what you could do with animals. Chris is drawing the most handsome character I see now. I'm mesmerized when he draws, but clearly the most handsome hero of all. I won't even do the blah, blah, blah joke for you. I'll, I know. I'll, he I'll, usually I'll... writes blah, blah, blah above my head, which is pretty much how it goes. Um, and for my youngest, who's creative and has, you know, is a Lego kid and loves to draw. We did, I am Jim Henson. I am Mr. Uh, I'm books. I haven't even done. Uh, I am Jim Henson. I am Walt Disney. I am Leonardo da Vinci. And I love the fact that people use our books, whether it's, I am Helen Keller, which has real braille in the book and the books go black when she goes blind and says, here's how I see the world. And then when she goes deaf, it says, cover your ears. Here's how I hear the world. And I love the fact that people use our books to fight back against the cynicism that they see so much in society today. I love the fact that people use them to build libraries of real heroes for their kids, their grandkids, their nieces, their nephews. And we have done some of our favorite heroes, especially in the past probably six months. We, you know, we've had from Anne Frank to Muhammad Ali to Malala. We've done so many heroes. This is our 28th book in the series, uh, which means if you were there from the start, you're getting old. And Let's talk about Dolly Parton because she absolutely belongs in that same vein of people we've been talking about. And I, I, I'll tell you that every time we do a book, we kind of, I always feel like we risk that hero because in my head, when, when I re, we all love these people, 
But when you research them, you, you learn so much more about them. And you start really figuring out, do you really love them? Do you know everything about them? Now you know everything about them. Is, is that person as good as you thought they were when you first took that cursory look? And Dolly Parton lives up to the hype. She does in every way. It was so amazing. I love her even more now, truthfully. And what I love about Dolly Parton in this book is you see her, uh, what a human being she is, what just a normal person she is. She, of course, grew up um, not far from you all. And she was so poor growing up that her father had to pay the doctor who delivered her as a baby with a sack of cornmeal. And it was her mother who fed her love of books. And one of the first books that Dolly Parton loved as a little girl was The Little Engine That Could. And that's Dolly Parton to me, that she's the little engine that could. And they told her, you know, you have to dress a certain way if you're going to be a musician. She was like, I'm not dressing that way. I'm going to wear these beautiful, sparkly costumes and have this giant, amazing hair. They said to her, well, you're going to just be, have to sing country songs. She's like, I'm going to sing songs that, you know, are, are all different genres. They said, you're going to just be a musician. And she was like, no, I'm going to be a movie star. And I'm going to open up my own amusement park. And I'm going to even have my own charity called the Imagination Library. And for those who don't know, the Imagination Library gives away free books to kids all across the country who can't afford it. You know what the first book they ever gave away was? First book you start with in the Imagination Library, you get the little engine that could. And I love that about her. I also love that her story, when you see it, is it's proof that success is not a straight line, that success doesn't come easy. When Dolly Parton's a little girl, her mother makes her this coat out of fabrics that's around the house. And Dolly thinks it's beautiful. She wears it to school as a little girl. And everyone tells her how ugly it is. She's crushed. And here's Dolly Parton's real secret. Is that when she's little, she feels lonely. She feels different than everyone else. Where she grew up, you know, at, at that time, people didn't always want to see what was all around the world. But she always wanted to know what's on the other side of that mountain. And she used to dream, actually have physical dreams that butterflies would lift her up and transport her there, carry her there. And that's the message I want for my kids. I want them to know that being a dreamer is a beautiful thing, that your dreams can take you anywhere. And of course, as you read I Am Dolly Parton, you'll see that. And I think what I love most about Dolly Parton is that when you go to her concerts, everybody is there. You see old people and young people, you see rich and you see poor, you see gay and straight, you see country folk and city folk, you see black and white and every color in between. Dolly doesn't judge any of them, she loves them all, as long as they are true to themselves. And my God, don't we all need our kids and even ourselves to be a little bit more true to ourselves and, and be as authentic as Dolly Parton is. And I think you'll see in the book, you'll just fall in love with her again. I know you all love her. You wouldn't be here tonight, but you're going to fall in love with her again. And that's obviously Dolly Parton. What I also brought tonight is not just Dolly Parton. We want to kind of let Chris draw and then get to your questions because that's always the most fun is when you get to ask questions. So think of good questions and you can put them in the chat and figure we'll figure them all out. But let's talk about I am pay. Now, I am pay. I'll go, wait, wait, don't. I'm not. I'm don't not. I'm being good. I'm being good. I see you. This is what I'm going to do. So we, listen, I am pay people like, who's I am pay? A lot of people don't know. The no, reason we did I am pay is the number one question, the number one request we got from kids was, when are you going to do an Asian American hero? They, they would write to us and they'd say, listen, you've done black, you've done white, you've done Hispanic, you've done Indian, you've done Native American, where's our hero? And when kids write to us, we listen, we take that seriously. That's how we got Frida Kahlo. She was the number one most requested hero we were getting letters on. So we said, we've got to do Frida Kahlo. And when it came to I am pay, we were like, okay, we want someone who's, he's all, he's of course the great architect who did the Louvre, who created this beautiful glass entryway that you see when he redesigned the Louvre and updated it for modern times. But what you learn about is him as an architect. And of course, it's him all teaching us about perspective, that we all need to have more perspective, a different way to look at things in our lives. When we thought that we were going to do something with perspective, we felt the book itself had to have a different way of looking at things. And so even as you're reading the book, you'll see that sometimes you'll have like a nice page that Chris, his beautiful art shows. But as he learns about becoming an architect, the book itself goes sideways and the book goes sideways and you get giant, amazing pictures, right? I love that you get to see these gorgeous buildings. This is when he says, he sees one of his first skyscrapers. And it says when he was in Shanghai, he felt like, 
it was a hole in the ground and then it grew into this amazing thing. And then Chris showed you, I think it's the, you showed JFK, right, Chris? Yeah, he showed, you just showed JFK or the Louvre? I Louvre. Oh, he showed the Louvre, okay. Um, right, because JFK is straight, right? So here's the Louvre. But what I love, I can't believe you didn't blow it. I thought you were going to show it for sure. No, when you get I'm, to the, I'm being good. Let's do it together. Wait, let's do it together. We I, haven't done okay. it together yet. All right. We're going to do it together. So what? we were like, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this book the best book ever. And when you read it, not only do you get just a normal book, you get, watch this. Bum, 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 bum. It's a pop-up book too. You get to see the Louvre. Look at this. It's so awesome. And when, and the great part is we thought we were such geniuses when we came up with this, we were like, we were, we were geniuses that we thought to put a pop-up book in I am, I am pay. And then our editor was like, yeah, geniuses, that great idea you had, it now delayed the book a year because of the supply chain. So the book was done a year ago almost. And uh, needless to say, it's finally out now. You finally get to read about I am pay, but it is well worth it. As the pandemic hit, Chris and our amazing, amazing designer, uh, Jason Henry literally had to figure out how to do that pop-up because it wasn't a standard pop-up. It was a four-sided triangle. So while the pandemic was hitting, one of my permanent memories now of it, of those first days, is Jason sending us videos of him figuring out the pop-up, Chris drawing on it. Uh, and all of that is to say, it leads to this. I'm going to read you the end of the book because I think it goes so well with what we're doing here tonight. Um, he says, never stop looking at things from different points of view. Keep your eyes and ears open to the world and your mind open to new ideas. Let the light in. When you do, you'll have a blueprint for success. And then it says, your future is yours to construct brick by brick. You can design it, shape it, and build something beautiful, build something meaningful, build something that expresses who you are. I am, I am pay, and I know that you are the architect of your life. That's what it says in the back. So those are the two books. Um, what I'm going to do is turn it over to Mr. Chris, who's going to teach you how to all become professional artists because he's slowly training you all to take over his job so he can just not work as hard. Uh, and here is, let's clap it up. I know he can hear every one of your claps. Let's clap it up from Mr. Chris Eliopoulos. Pow, pow, pow. Yeah, I'm like Willy Wonka. I'm training the next generation to take over my chocolate factory. So, um, you know, what we're going to do today, Brad, I want you to draw too. If you have a pencil and paper, do your kids bring something? Do you have anything over there? Um, we're going to do for the first time. I didn't even do this at our live event. We're going to draw Dolly just for the first time. Ooh. So work with me here. I'm, I'm probably going to have a difficult time, but I'll give you a little taste. A lot of people, when I do this, the kids say, I can't draw. I'll never be able to draw. Even the adults are like that. Um, when I was a little kid, I was very shy. I was scared to do anything, scared to talk to people. Um, and I would sit and draw all the time. Um, and that's how I communicated when I would be upset and bothered at school. My mother knew something was wrong. I couldn't even talk to her. I would draw a picture and, uh, tell her what I was going on and I would fold it up as an airplane and I'd mail it down to her and she could discover what was wrong. And that's how I communicated. So if you're having trouble communicating, you can use drawing as a way to talk about your feelings. Um, but I'm going to give you some basic lessons. We're going to draw Dolly Parton. Um, and they're all just really just basic shapes. So we're going to start. Right at the top, we're going to do a big arching half circle, almost like a sun in the sky. We're going to go up and over like that. All right. Basic shape. Next up, we're going to do like a little wavy, wavy line on the side here. We're just going to come almost like an S shape that keeps going. Woo. Okay. Now we're going to do a, one parallel, meaning right next to it, exactly like it. We're going to go... Like that, okay. Now we're gonna do something on the other side. We're just gonna do a, like, an, like a sideways, upside down S. We're gonna go up and down and out. So maybe an upside down S. Then we're gonna do it again, parallel line. Whoop. All right. Now comes the other fun part. The bottom half of that circle that we were drawing, we're gonna come right underneath. Come right up to that point, right? Now we're gonna do a little half circle on the one side for her one ear. And if you want, you can even draw a little star for her earring. And then maybe give her a star on the other side, right over here for her other earring. And then we're gonna continue on the hair. So on the outside, that big circle, 
we're just going to do a bunch of wavy lines down and a wavy line down. She used to love to wear those big giant wigs. Um, so we're going to make sure that that hair is big. Next up, we're going to give her her nose. Wonderful little petite nose right in the center. Just like that. And then we're gonna do a couple little ovals for her eyes. We're just gonna go whoop, Feel free to make sound effects, Brad. And then whoop, we're gonna fill in a little bit on each one. Now for Dolly, when we were doing this one, she's always in makeup, which is like totally cool. So we're gonna have a couple little like eyelashes that come out. So three little lines that go just like that. And then we're gonna give her a couple eyebrows like that. Now comes the fun part, a big smile. We're gonna start with a straight line that goes right across. And then I wanna see another half circle down below. And if you want, we'll do something special this time. We're gonna give her a big bunch of teeth. We're gonna go straight across and then just fill in with lines. Now, if you look at Dolly, which is something I had to do a lot for this book, you notice that she's got these wonderful little dimples on the side of her cheeks. So we're gonna give her a couple little dimples on either side. And then you can just add some flourishes. Like I tend to put a little few hairs here. And then some maybe like hair is coming down from the top. So you show the hair coming down. And then we're gonna do a little half circle underneath her collar. And then just cause she had the frills, we're gonna do like a couple little wavy lines like underneath for her shirt. And then we're gonna do a little circle, half circle on each side. Now the fun part when I was drawing her is, so we're gonna draw a rectangle right off the side like this. And then I'm gonna put a line in the middle of it. And then I want you to just draw a little half circle, half circle, just like that, her little hand right there. And then what we're gonna do is she has these little cowboy uh, little, right? What are those called? Those little stringy things. The stringy things. Frills. Frills. So, and you can do it on the other side if you want another half circle, um, half rectangle and, and then frills. And then for the most important part is you sign your name, you put your name down there right at the bottom. This is my name and you can put your name. Now here's the trick though. To get better and keep doing this, you just have to do it every single day. The difference between me and anybody that's just learning how to draw is you do it every single day. Now, as your first assignment for your cartoon class, have your moms and dads and uncles and aunts and grandparents, whoever's with you, have them take a picture of your drawing and post it to social media and let us see your drawings, okay? So after this event is over, I wanna see how well you did. Tag Brad and I and we'll, we'll let you know how wonderful they are. So Brad, let's see yours. Oh, look at that oh, one. Oh, so bad. I did, by the way, it's with my finger. Finger on the iPhone. On the iPhone. Brilliant, brilliant. It's embarrassing is what it is, it's terrible. So what we're gonna do at this point, I think is we're gonna add in some, we're gonna bring in some Q and A. So if you have any more questions down below in the chat section, Brad's gonna read any questions you might I'm have. Questions, yes. Hold you have on, some questions? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, hold on. Hold on, okay. Right. So here are the questions that are coming in. Okay. First question, can you please say hello to Mrs. Gilchrist second grade class? Hello, Mrs. Gilchrist second grade class. We love you for being here. It says they read 26 out of the 28 of your books. We'll finish the last two before the end of the school year. Wow. We'll be watching the recording of this tomorrow at school. Okay, let's talk about it for a moment. This class, Mrs. Gilchrist class, may singly, I'm just going to, I don't want to exaggerate. It may be the greatest class of all time. Yep. This is the greatest class of all I mean, they have read 28 out of 28 books supporting us. It means they have, well, okay, we know one thing. They have an amazing teacher. Miss Gilchrist is the best. 
We know that they have an amazing librarian because they got all those books. We know they have amazing parents because those kids, you know, they requested her. They know she's the favorite teacher. We know that kids, you'll see how the world really works. Um, but for, we love you for telling us that. That means so much to me. Uh, I, I, my life was changed by a teacher and uh, it gets me actually a little emotional, but I, I love the fact that you're sharing that with your kids in that classroom. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ah, whew, that's how much it moved me. It started it making me sneeze. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that for us, Mrs. Gilchrist. We love your class. Okay, here we go. Um, Six-year-old Emmy loves the pop-up book. She would like to know if you're going to make another pop-up book in the future. Emmy, we would love to do more pop-up books. I think, that our editor, years. <laughs> I think our editor will kill us. Well, first our editor will kill us. Then Jason will. Then Chris will murder me. Um, although, Chris, do you want to tell them the surprise you put? Because people here came tonight. Mm -hmm. You think if you came here tonight, you're like, oh, I know what it was. I can just follow you on social media. I'll know. No. If you came here tonight... We're going to show you things, by the way, that no one else gets to see. And we're going to ask you to not tell anyone. That's it. Don't tell anyone what we tell you tonight, because we're going to show you. I brought something that no one has seen yet. Nobody's seen, but we're going to show you guys tonight for coming here. So, Chris, you show them the surprise on, on what's on there. No one knows. On the, uh, on the back of the, the Louvre? Yep. So if you look, I don't know which side I can do, but it's kind of bright. But if you look on the back, I also show the interiors and I show there's a spot right over here where you can see the Mona Lisa and right next to it, you will see Brad Meltzer hiding, never looking better in, in the Louvre. So I always hide Brad in all these books. So in this case, this is one of many I've actually hidden him. Um, you're gonna like it, yeah. But you're, you're, in, uh, you're in every book. Um, and so I hid him there. Where else did I hide you? Oh, speaking of classrooms, there's Brad as a teacher. How cool! Yeah, is that's that? a good one on there. So, so yes, I snuck him in everywhere. Um, I sneak my kids into every book, so they're sitting right there. Yeah, in every book. So let's tell them in every single book, Chris's twin boys are there. You'll yep. find my three kids are hidden in every book. Yep. I'm hidden in every book. Mm -hmm. um, in in, by the way, I want you to know this, this no one knows. In Dolly Parton, I, I never ever tell Chris where to hide me. He does it all himself. He's amazing. It's like a game that I get to play where I look for myself. And I, I did ask in I Am Am Frank to make sure that I had a yarmulke on in the background. The only other book I've ever asked for my cameo for what I was doing is in Dolly Parton. I said, I want to be holding a mug that says Cup of Ambition. And it's in there, baby. You're going to find it. So I'm in every book. You can find Superman or Clark Kent is hidden in every book. You can find the number 27 is hidden in every book. And you can see who the next hero is, is also hidden in every single book. So if you read I'm Amelia Earhart, and Miss Gilchrist, you better be, you hope you know this. If you read I'm Amelia Earhart, you can see Abraham Lincoln hidden in the book. And I'm Abraham Lincoln. You can find Rosa Parks in that book. And you can see every hero. I don't know if you're going to want to really play the game. Look for 28 and you'll find the whole, everyone's hidden. Okay, let's go. But I love that. I mean, you want us to do that because we're going to be in trouble. My six-year-old son, Dylan, wants to know if you can write a book about every hero in the world. His favorite book is I Am Helen Keller. First of all, Dylan, clearly a child with taste and uh, clear genius. Helen mm -hmm. Keller is one of my favorite books also. And I do, I know, I do want to write a book about every hero in the world. When we first came to our publisher, Chris and I said, they said, oh, you want to do Amelia Hart and Abraham Lincoln? That's so nice. And I said, no, no, no. I don't want to do two books. I want to do a hundred books. And they did the best thing of all is they didn't laugh. And we are, we are right now at book 28. We finished 29, 30, 31, almost 30. We're almost done with 32 of them. So we're almost a third of the way there. Um, so that's our goal, Dylan. I'm with you. Hi, Brad and Chris. What's your favorite Xavier real episode? Brent, is this you? It must be Brent. Okay. So my uh, Chris, you're gonna have a different. Maybe you have a different answer. My my favorite Xavier Riddle episode. I think the two that I love best. I just want to think for a moment. I love, I love the Amelia Earhart episode because it was just it started the books and to see that come to life was amazing. But I think my favorite episode we've ever done. Oh, I know. Oh, I take it back. I take back my own answer. I was gonna say Helen Keller. I love, I love the Helen Keller episode, but it's tied with Mr. Rogers. I think Mr. Rogers may be one of my favorites. 
Chris, what do you got? Um, yeah, I love the Mr. Rogers. Um, I'm trying to, th- God, there were so many of them. They were all so much fun to do. Um, and I had so many good memories of recording with all the, the kids that it was like a blast to do. Um, man, that's a good question. I, I, I think, yeah, Amelia Earhart was like, she's like our icon. She's our hero. So I think she's always been like sort of our good luck charm when the book worked and when the TV show worked, we know we were in, in good hands. So um, that one was important to me. So yeah, I'm with you. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, wait, Brad, who um, is this? Oh, I'm going to show you stuff. Okay. Wait, you want to do that now? Let's go, let's do that now. Well, I figured oh, Chris, I you, you have to right send me. I just realized I deleted the, I deleted the third one and in, 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 I'm going to show them the first two, but I want, let's show them the third one, but I can't find it. You have it on your phone. Um, if, hold on, get, I'm going to send it to myself. Okay, I'm going to talk. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So, some of you knows we're going to show you some things that no one knows. All we ask, again, is don't tell anybody. We're going to take a blood oath, everyone right now. No, we're not taking a blood oath. But we do ask, seriously, don't tell anyone what we're going to tell you. We're going to show you some cool things that are coming up in the Xavier, in, uh, Xavier, in the kids' books. And some of them you can see online, but we're going to show you things that nobody's seen yet. And just be, this, Why? Because you're here. You're spending time with us. So... The next books that come out after Dolly Parton and I am Pay, you will see what Chris just drew. Here is Superman. Can you see this? Let me move this over so you can see it. Look at that. That's Superman. And then we're doing I am Batman. How cool is that? Chris drawing Batman. And then we are doing I am John Lewis, which is coming out. And you can, again, I know you can see this on my site. You're like, I'm not impressed, Brad. And you're like, then we're doing I Am Temple Grandin, which is our first autistic hero. Can you see that? Okay, yeah. And we're doing Temple Grandin, which is amazing and wonderful to do. And then Chris is getting it ready right now. I know. Here we go. Hold on. You got it? Okay. Send it to me. I Am Wonder Woman. That's the first look. No one has seen it yet. That is Wonder Woman. Don't take a screenshot. Don't show anybody. Chris, can you please send me that? Because my wife yeah. is going to kill me if she doesn't see it soon. Um, <laughs> And you are the first one to see it. When that book comes out, you can go tell people, I'm the first one who saw it. I saw it and no one saw it. We haven't shown anyone. If our editor, don't tell her you saw it because she would not want us to know that we showed it to you. So we're now protecting your lives and our lives. If you want more books, you got to do it or we'll be dead before the next book. Right, exactly. Way to scare the children. Um, (laughs) And so, but yeah, I mean, come on. How great is that? That is so good. I love how good that came out. Isn't modern technology see? amazing? I just sent that to you and boom, on the air. Like I that. had it in one second. That's good. Um, so the next one, and then I'm going to show you this because I think what will go perfectly with that is the next book that comes out between those, perfect for children, is, let's see if I can get it to pull up here. I know I brought it. Here it is. The Nazi Conspiracy. Perfect for children of all ages. No, Wait, this I is didn't not draw that. Book. It is actually, it is actually our next, um, in January, it comes out right before Wonder Woman comes out and before uh, John Lewis, but it's the next nonfiction book we're doing. And Chris has, have you announced your new one yet or no? Can I not say anything? It's sort of been announced, but um, I have one coming out the end of July. It's called A Little Angry, um, and it looks just like my drawing. So it's all about it's how really we good. I already mind. read it. It's spectacular. And don't forget the giggles are coming and the yawns are coming. Chris also did. And then we also did. If you don't have this now, come on. It came out last month. Perfect for Father's Day. Hint, hint is the lightning rod. So this also goes really good with Dolly Parton, I think. Um, So those are the next, that's what Chris is drawing. Yeah, wait. Okay, now let's go back to questions. So let's find your questions here. Um, Oh, how long does it take to research for a book? You know, it depends. It really depends on the person. I mean, someone like, Abraham Lincoln took so long because there was so many books written about him. Um, Some people are a little easier because they're more modern. So it's, there's not, you know, a hundred and 200 years of history about them. And this leads actually to the next question. It says, do you, did you interview Dolly or just research for the book? So when we do a book, every book we do, and this will show you more about the research process. I always know I, I can do all the research I want. We read multiple books. We have obviously, Someone helps with the research and condenses like every book out there into like, here are the best ones. And and I get to, you know, then read the best ones. But we always want to find who the perfect person is in the field out there um, to make sure that we're doing it correctly. 
So when we did I am Jane Goodall, we sent it to Jane Goodall and she weighed in on it and told us different edits and things to make and changes to make. When we did I am Billie Jean King, she spent two hours on the phone with me making corrections down to the color of her shoes in every different match, into the color which shoes she was wearing in every single match. So here we are doing Dolly Parton. You can't mess up Dolly Parton. So of course we sent it to our friends at the Dollywood Foundation at the Imagination Library. And David Dotson was one of the nicest people on the whole planet um, who took all of our questions back. I don't know whether he took them to Dolly, to himself. I never really wanted to ask him because I didn't want to pry, but the answers that came back were so, I'll just tell you, they, they would basically say like, can you feature the person who delivered the baby because he was so important to the family? And you're like, these are such, they were answers that were so nice. And they were so clearly about her childhood where only she was there. Um, so they just couldn't be nicer. So I don't know, if, you know, same thing with like doing Oprah Winfrey, like you, she has whole teams of people, but they were so nice and so great. And we love Dolly Parton for it and for having her whole team help us. We got research and, um, and, and correcting all the, any mistakes that might be in the book and even giving us photographs, which they were so nice to give us um, that you can see of her in the back of the book. So we love working with them. Okay, next question. Um, thank both of you for helping my firsties, oh, first graders, learn the genre about biographies. Do you think you would ever write an I Am Brad Meltzer, I Am Chris Eliopoulos, or is that too meta? I think I would write an I Am Chris Eliopoulos if oh. Chris will draw the other. I, I, I did do, I do the other one. I, I, think your, I think your firsties are going to do it one day. I, I did an I Am Brad Meltzer. I did a t-shirt and I did a book. He did do, actually, that's true. So, so a friend of mine as a present for me did do an I Am Brad Meltzer uh, as a favor for me and surprised me with it that Chris drew the cover of. She didn't obviously know a lot about my past. She knew a lot of stuff now. But Chris, the best Chris, best gift you've ever given me, Chris, truly, is when I was on book tour a really long time, one time, and I came home, it was right when we started the books, and I came off, I'll never forget, I was in West Palm Beach Airport, and oh, I man. came off the plane, and my three little kids, they were all little at the time, were all dressed in I Am Brad Meltzer t-shirts that my wife had put on them, thanks to the shirts and stuff that Chris had made. And it was, I mean, I have a picture of it, it's still one of my favorite pictures of all time, so that one does exist, but it's only a, it's only a, a reading copy of one. Okay, I still have that t-shirt. I made one for what? myself, too. Oh, you do? You, oh, right, you did, because you wore it to one of the events. Yeah. Um, it says, my eight-year-old son Holden wants to know, how do you choose someone to write about with so many options to choose from? Um, that's a good question, Holden. So in truth, most of the time we've been really looking at, how do we say it? Um, lessons for our own kids that we want them to have at that moment in time. So whether it's, you know, I knew I wanted to do Jackie Robinson for my son who loves sports. And I wanted to show him what a real athlete as a hero looks like. For my daughter, Jane Goodall was an obvious choice, but also because I wanted my daughter to see what you could do with a love of animals and a love of science. Um, and as I expressed, same thing with my youngest one. Chris picked ones like, um, Chris was, actually, Chris, you were also a big Jim Henson. You were big. Neil Armstrong was Chris, one, one of his biggest ones, because he just loves Neil Armstrong. He loves this, uh stuff in outer space yep. and we tend to pick what you know things we like match with lessons we wanted to give our kids yeah. um there's no question also that we look at what the world is and what we think the world needs so when we saw that muslims were being targeted we did i am muhammad ali and i am malala when we saw and we were getting all these letters from kids out there about where's our asian hero here came i am pay when we saw all these kids writing to us saying you know i want a, a, you know someone who's hispanic he got Frida Kahlo. And, that would, and, and I think, I love the fact that we listen to you. I love that Holden, you know, you can write a letter and tell us what you think. Of, and, you know, that's important to us because it shows us who you're looking for and what you need. So, it, and then obviously our editor weighs in and the publisher weighs in and we all kind of try and figure out where do we need this message? I can tell you that with everything that's been discussed about race and where, you know, as, as a culture, we're just arguing and both sides are fighting tooth and nail. And Chris and I just believe we shouldn't be fighting like that. And what we can do is look to some great heroes and, and get real answers. So John Lewis came out of that. It's just watching the country struggle with this question about race. We thought about doing John Lewis years ago and we just like, oh, we just did Dr. King and we, we don't want to do two civil rights icons right in a row. And then it seemed like, you know what, we need this more than ever right now. So John Lewis came out of that and, and so did 
um, so many amazing autistic kids that were writing to us and that we saw that we got Temple Grandin. And I remember it, announcing Temple Grandin on my book tour for the Lightning Rod is the first time I announced it there. And I watched a mother of an autistic child who I love and I love their family. And I watched her, as I said the words, I watched her burst into tears. And it just was so meaningful to me because she knew what that book was going to be about, that it's the book is about how just beautiful it is to be different. And that's a wonderful thing to be. So all those things go into each of our choices and we try to see where we go. Here's a question from Chris. It says, Chris, how do you decide what to draw for the cover? Oh, I want to hear this answer. Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, we decide on who the hero is. And then I go off and look, Do I do research myself too. I look at the most iconic pictures of these people. And then I go back and I draw up like four to eight to 12 different cover ideas. I send it into Brad and our publisher, Lori, and Jason, who's our designer. And we sort of circle around a little bit and come to a conclusion, which one we like best. And then I take that and work it up into um, the pencil stage, which is a little bit bigger and, and take a look at it and make final changes. Like if you look at the Wonder Woman cover, we were just dealing with her lasso. And I made a few little changes even into the color stage where we tried to make the lasso go around the logo, the title. Um, and so it takes a few go arounds. And sometimes I've actually done a full on cover and then we've scrapped it and I've gone back to the beginning. So George Washington, um, George Washington had like 50 different ways that you kept drawing him because we couldn't decide how his hat should look. It was his and hat and his hair. I did. I, I think we did a special edition where I showed like 20 different hair samples of the way I would draw his hair. Um, but it's sort of like, it's that, that whole thing. When you look at it and you know it's right, that's it. You go with it. And so once we lock it down, that's it. We're pretty much, you know, set. So, uh, but the funny part is you should tell him, you know, Chris draws the cover usually before he's ever read the book, before yes. the book's written, because they always need the cover to tell the, the people in the publishing house what books are coming. Right. So he'll draw an entire cover and he and I will go back and forth and back and forth on the cover. And neither of us really have started our process yet. It's just that Chris knows what they look like. And then we kind of, once we have that, then we can go from there. So it's pretty fun to watch him do stuff so far in advance of like, he's, you just started drawing Wonder Woman now, but you worked on that cover months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And even the Temple Grandin and John Lewis. The other thing we do too, is um, I help design the characters for Xavier and I have to make sure that whatever we do on Xavier, if we carry the character over to our books, they have to match. So like Temple Grandin, we did as an episode this past year, which actually might've been one of my favorites as well. Um, and now that we're working on it, she's going to match the look from the TV show. So when you are with your kids and you're watching the show and you want more information on Temple Grandin, you can pick up the book and they can look at it and say, oh, it's the same person. So that's what we like to do is try to make it all work together for our kids. Amen. Okay. Any last questions? We're going to take one last question. If you have one, that was the last question. We are done. Okay. Let me start, let me end by this. Let Wait, me, I have a question me. for you, Brad. Yeah. Hit me. Um, I figure since there's, this is our first virtual and only virtual, what, what's going on with Xavier Riddle? Anything exciting new coming up? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question. I'm so glad you asked that. Thanks. Um, I, I, I can't believe I didn't say that. I'm sorry. I did do that on the lightning rod tour and I forgot to do it here. Um, so <laughs> some genius just asked cause I forgot to say it. So what is also coming up? So we're, we're not supposed PBS never does announcements for like season two of anything or season three or season anything. They just don't do it. So I know all of you are saying, tell us about whether Xavier Riddle is going to come back. And for those who don't know, Xavier Riddle is the TV show based on our kids books. It's on PBS kids. It's called Xavier Riddle in the secret museum. It's about a boy named Xavier, his sister, Yadina, and their best friend, Brad, the most handsome cartoon character of all time. And they have a problem like they're being bullied and they go back in time. They meet Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks teaches them how to deal with the bully. They come back to the present day. Chris drew all the characters. I came up with Xavier and Yadina and, and Brad. And we love doing that show on PBS Kids. You can see them. They're hidden in all the books now. And which is what Chris is looking for. I know. I was going to say, like, he's there. You see, like. There they are. There's Xavier in the red hoodie in the back. And one of the things that we can say is that Xavier is absolutely coming back for season two. Season two has taken place. We're not supposed to say it, but you came here tonight. So we're telling you. Um, so thank you for joining us. Yep. There's Brad. And there's a little Clark Kent there too, a little Superman. Um, 
But I want to end exactly as we began, which is the most important thing we, as I said, we, we were going to say at the start, which is thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you for bringing our kids, Ms. Gilchrist, that you are so awesome. And all the teachers who brought their kids and all the parents who brought their kids with us tonight, we so appreciate having you and your kids in our lives. We do these books because they are really our soul in book form. And it's our goal to take these stories of heroes and they've never been about history. They're about values and putting better values out in the world and giving our kids something beautiful to look up to, to teach them perseverance, to teach them kindness, teach them how to be good human beings to each other. We all need that right now. So thank you for helping us arm this little army of do-gooders. We're going to go out there and change the world on behalf of myself and Chris Parnassus books. We love you. Love you. Love you. Please buy books from them and support them. They are amazing, amazing local, uh, just uh, truly one of the great spots there. And uh, you're so lucky to have an incredible independent bookseller like that. So thank you for joining us tonight. We will see you for the next one. And if you were paying attention, you know who that is. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. That's a theme. Hey, copyright, Jones. copyright. Don't. I was gonna say. Luckily, I'm out of tune, so they can't sue me. Okay. Thank you for joining us tonight. We love.